Hi everybody. In the last several videos, we've been talking about Dr. Bredesen's first book published in 2017 that has served as the first playbook for my dad, The End of Alzheimer's, the first program to prevent and reverse cognitive decline. We've talked about the key areas of the book, like why past attempts at a cure had failed before the Bredesen protocol, what Alzheimer's really is, and the 36 holes in the roof. We're coming right back to follow it up all with personalized evaluation and treatment. Quick recap. From Bredesen's work, we found that amyloid was not the cause of Alzheimer's, but merely a feature of it. Instead of just stopping at amyloid, he went a level deeper and asked the question, why? Why was the amyloid being formed in the first place? His team found that the body was producing amyloid on purpose as part of a protective response to three classes of threats the patient's brain was trying to defend itself from. Number one, inflammation from infection, diet, or other causes. Number two, decline and shortage of necessary nutrients, hormones, and brain supportive compounds. And number three, toxic exposures like heavy metals, chemical toxins, or biological toxins produced by bacterial, fungal, parasitic, and or viral infections. Amyloid wasn't the true bad guy. He wasn't the arsonist that caused the fire. He was the firefighter showing up to help put out the fire. This was so key because while past therapies had just tried to remove amyloid, Dr. Bredesen actually got people better because he decided to treat the true issues upstream that were actually stimulating the amyloid production in the first place. So important. When the brain is defending itself from these threats, it has to conserve energy and starts to purposely downsize communication. We had talked about synapses, the connections from brain cell to brain cell, how neurons communicate with each other and pass along information. We talked about how our brains consume anywhere from 20 to 25 percent of our total daily energy intake. It's a lot of energy. So Alzheimer's is what happens when the brain starts to purposely downsize its synaptic communication network, conserve energy, and reinvest that energy in protecting itself from these multiple threats. The brain is pulling back, preserving only the functions it needs to stay alive. And it's not expending energy or resources on the formation of memories it decides it doesn't need. But the good news was, to get patients better, Bredesen simply decided to identify which of the threats a patient's brain was responding to. He treated and removed the threats, and their brains could heal. They found that fixing the condition was like fixing 36 holes in your roof. There were at least 36 factors that were central to optimal cognitive health. When the brain had to defend itself from these threats, it was like a hailstorm punching 36 holes in your roof. These 36 had to be addressed and treated for the body and brain to start to heal, repair itself, and reverse symptoms. We went through some of the holes in the last video. It's a lot of them, which is why what was needed was a personalized program that addressed these multiple factors that could be followed and optimized. You followed the program, the body would respond and start to patch up these 36 holes. In Bredesen's 2014 study, the first iteration of the program that patients used to successfully reverse their cognitive decline, reverse their Alzheimer's, was the MEND protocol, Metabolic Enhancement for Neurodegeneration. By 2017, MEND had evolved into the RECODE protocol, RECODE for Reversal of Cognitive Decline. RECODE was a personalized program tailored to how every patient tested at the beginning of the protocol so that an appropriate program could be drawn up for each patient there would need to be a personalized evaluation to see where they stood with these 36 holes. Dr. Bredesen calls this the cognoscopy. Many know that when we turn 50, a colonoscopy is suggested to screen for and prevent colorectal cancer. This is standard of care. Bredesen's firm position is that when we reach the age of 45, we should all have a standard cognoscopy to screen for all the potential contributors and risk factors for cognitive decline. I won't go through all of them, but the main areas of the evaluation include tests for gauging the patient's genetics, inflammation levels, infections, insulin levels, hormonal status, toxic exposures, immune system status, body mass index, among others. All of these together paint a clear picture and set a nice baseline for where the patient stands in relation to the risk factors for cognitive decline. If the tests show mostly good values, a prevention program can be drawn up. If values come back less than stellar, a reversal program is drawn up. Remember, the changes in the brain associated with Alzheimer's start on average 10 to 15 years before symptoms start to show up. So it's important to screen for these things and start to optimize these values early. After all these factors have been identified, the RECODE protocol calls for addressing each of these. 
Now, Recode is comprehensive and it's gonna be a little bit different for everyone, but here are the key areas the protocol aims to improve. Restoring insulin sensitivity, doing that mainly with a lower glycemic anti-Alzheimer's diet, which we're gonna get into more in detail in a future video. Getting regular exercise, optimizing sleep quality, reducing stress, brain training, lowering inflammation, healing the gut and optimizing digestive function, balancing hormones, balancing mineral status, getting rid of toxins. We'll unpack Recode and break down the details of how all these get implemented in future videos, but episode four has a good breakdown of how one patient reversed her cognitive decline in the 2014 study with Dr. Bredesen's MEN protocol, which preceded Recode. I've linked the book below again in the comments and I strongly encourage everyone to have a copy and I'd love to hear from you. Are you currently on Recode now and what's your feedback? If you found this information helpful, please feel free to share this video with anyone you think it could serve. And remember, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a PhD. I'm a caregiver and citizen researcher on the ground helping a loved one, someone just like you. This information is for educational purposes only. Please consult your medical practitioner before implementing any changes. Thank you for watching. My dad thanks you. Hope these resources are helpful to you and your family and see you in the next video. Thanks.